I'm Tanya Breyer and I've come to discover Moscow through the eyes of one of its most famous and beautiful faces, the supermodel and philanthropist Natalia Vodianova. Welcome to Trailblazers. Acclaimed fashion photographer Mario Testino famously nicknamed her Supernova. And looking at Natalia Vodinova's career, it's easy to see why. She's graced the cover of every major international fashion magazine, including an astonishing 71 Vogue covers. She's amused to the world's top designers, appearing in over 400 runway shows and starring in a multitude of exclusive advertising campaigns, including some of the fashion world's most coveted, like Calvin Klein, L'Oreal, Versace and Guerlain. But Natalia's early life was polar opposite to the one she considers herself blessed with now. So as I begin my Moscow adventure, I caught up with Supernova in the city's most famous landmark, Red Square. It's such an incredible square. Thank you. You should, do, I mean, I, I say thank you because I'm Russian and of, <laughs> well, of course, course Red Square belongs to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Red Square, it's all about dreams and ambition and, 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 and you know, here so many people come and, and they dream of a better life, they dream of travels, and uh, they dream of success, and I guess, um, yes, it's very inspiring. Natalia Mikhailovna Vodianova was born in Nizhny Novgorod, an industrial town 400 kilometers east of Moscow. Even the idea of dreaming of a better life may have seemed impossible for the young Natalia, because under Soviet rule, Nizhny was a closed city, meaning travel to and from it required special permission. Now the city celebrates new adventures. It even has an around the world in 80 days inspired sculpture of the legendary French author Jules Verne. He wrote nine novels about Russia, including one titled Michel Strogoff, that is specifically set in Nizhny Novgorod. Tell me a little bit about your childhood, Natalia, because I know it, it wasn't easy. Yes, it, it, it was certainly not, not simple. And I, I, I still feel always very fortunate because as a child I had, most important, I had my mother's love. and. I know I, I I can I can see that our childhood was very difficult and our life was very difficult. Natalia was raised in one of Nizhny's poorest neighborhoods. Her mother was forced to work long hours just to feed her daughters, one of whom, Oksana, has autism and cerebral palsy. I also um, read that you were looking after your sister, you were also working, you were working on a, on a fruit stand, helping your mother and going to school. Now I realize how supportive my teachers um, were and how much they really, they really loved me and pushed me. Because the, my reality was I was doing really good uh, work in classroom because I was not distracted. I, I didn't have many friends. No one really liked me because of you know, my sister and because I was super skinny and I was badly dressed and I, you know, I didn't have the fancy stuff and I was not a fancy girl. So I was really mostly left to, to, to my own devices. And, and also it was really hard because, as I said, you know, the, the other kids and kids are by, by nature, they're very cruel creatures. They're just very honest. And yes. so they say what they think and and of course what because of very little awareness around special needs, very little awareness of condition of my sister, why she's like this. And uh, of course um, her labeling and her, you know, the, the, the stigmas and uh, that was on her, it's brushed off on me big time because I'm the one who was aware of what's happening and what they were saying and what they, um, 
what they what they were doing and and it's really of course hurt me Natalia left school early to earn money for her family but then when she was 17 years old a modeling scout came to town and noticed the thin badly dressed teenager and sent her to Moscow she was signed to an agency and then went to Paris now I realize I must have been so scared to fail you know imagine to go somewhere to Paris and everybody is of course knowing that you went there and then uh, to come back with failure or you know it's it's just I was too proud for that and of course you didn't fail at all Natalia you became one of the most successful models of your generation how did that transition feel for you well luckily for me that transition was not sort of extremely fast it was it took a, a good year um, in working in Paris, doing um, local, more local magazines, building my book, what they call my portfolio, uh, before I actually already was pregnant with uh, Lucas and went to New York. And uh, that's when I landed my first big campaign with Marc Jacobs for Jürgen Teller. And, and in that, that picture, I think, kind of shook the, the fashion world because, of course, with Jürgen, it was very controversial. Everybody was saying, who is this girl? And so it was, um, that's sort of how it started. Around 35 million tourists a year now flock to Russia, and the bulk of them visit its capital city, Moscow. I've come here to the popular cafe Pushkin to have breakfast with Natalia and her family. It combines perfectly her fashion home of Paris with her motherland, Russia. Entering this 24-hour eatery is like stepping back into pre-revolutionary Russia, but in fact, it was only founded in 1999. In many ways, Café Pushkin exemplifies modern Russia, a country revisiting and embracing its classical cultural heritage. The restaurant is named after Alexander Pushkin, an early 19th century poet, playwright and novelist of the Romantic era, who is considered to be the founder of modern Russian literature. Well, thank you so much for inviting me here to have breakfast with you and the family at Pushkin. Is this one of the favorite places, do you think, Natalia, for people to come? Oh, is yes. it your favorite? Oh, yes. I've, I've been coming here for, for years. The food is incredible, but it yeah. also has this fusion, a little bit of a French, mm. French cuisine uh, to it. Because it's actually uh, meant to be in the style of 19th century restaurants and at the time everything was fusion and everybody spoke fluent French here in Russia and uh, so our culture was very different and very European we were very Europeanized when you come back to to Moscow Natalie what do you want to show the family Russian hospitality and um, and I Russia I think it's just beautiful country I even even in the 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 suburbs of it, it's just there is some kind of beauty in the sky, in the trees. The nature is so, so, so rich, the skies are so different. I miss it so much. I, even the smell here for me, it's, uh, it's, it's, it smells like home just because the air is uh, very light and it's, um, it's very fresh. And at the same time, again, it's, it's a place where the it's quite intense. And to show your children, it must have been also special for you. I try to give them as much as I can by, um, by sharing with them not just my story, but really about other people's stories. Yeah. It's so great that the children are able to do this. And I remember when we first began um, seeing each other with Natalia. So I was... Uh, a bit uh, overwhelmed as well because of uh, who she was and, uh, and everything she represented in the industry. And, uh, and then I realized 95% um, of her work is uh, making sure that her charity runs and helps other people and uh, especially linked to Russia whenever something happens, uh, usually she's, uh, she's around and, uh, and she makes sure that uh, these people suffer less. 
Natalia, this is, it's never left you, as Antoine is saying, that this passion of, of helping people. It's not exactly like this. It's almost a need. It's almost yes. a, a selfish uh, act yeah. in, in, uh, in some ways. I know it doesn't seem selfish, but it is, it is in, in, a, in ways selfish. Um, the way I, I, I think about it today is that I, I had a baggage to carry yes. and I turned it into a toolbox to help other people. Your mom's quite amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer my love. <laughs> In 2004, at age just 22, Natalia set up the Naked Heart Foundation, a charitable organisation that provides play areas for children, whatever their physical ability. It was just a reaction to a great tragedy at the time when uh, the Beslan happened and the school sage. And, 186 children died and so many survived but survived to live forever in 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 this que was questioning why not, why not me why you know and and I, I i felt that's when i really connected with my cause i felt i went back to my childhood and i i said what was what was really lacking in my childhood. And as I said, you know, I had my mother's love and I, I think I felt pretty safe as a child with that. The play, I needed that, I starved for it. And the moments when I was just a child playing with my friends for that one day or when everything was perfect. So I felt that the play is actually so, so important for this healing process. Every child just for healthy development needs to play. But from the, that first play park, I always thought of children with special needs. I always thought of this inclusive environment. As well as the hundreds of play areas built in Russia, the foundation has also funded three in the UK and one in Peru. But home is where the heart is, and I was lucky enough to travel from Moscow to Nizhny Novgorod, Natalia's hometown, where she and her entire family toured facilities supported by the foundation, and in particular, met with parents whose children have special needs. Yesterday, when we were sitting with the parents, I asked them mm, about the play parks. I, I said, do you think it's as relevant? Do you think it's as important? And uh, they said, absolutely. And not only for our children, but um, for all the children. Because in the end, we are all different, but we all have, mm, we are more similar than different. And we all love to, all the children love to play. All the children love to run on a play park and uh, they all love to eat ice cream and they all, you know, love to, uh, to hear stories and um, it's just finding, with, when it's children with special needs, it's just finding that key for them uh, to capture their attention so that they can enjoy those friendships and, um, and the environment for that is really important. I think the fact that of, because of what I do, the nature of what I do, it really helps me as a mother. I feel like I'm building heritage for my children and I share with them as much as I can of my work and my journey. And our journey with Natalia ends where we began, in the very heart of Moscow itself, Red Square. Just finally, describe to me Natalia's Moscow. Oh, my Moscow is, uh, is a very, very busy Moscow. It's, uh, it's full of uh, very inspiring people, great professionals, uh, great artists, uh, uh, great thinkers. And it's also traffic and it's great <laughs> yes. food and it's uh, great architecture and uh, beautiful, beautiful skies and um, Yes, and, uh, and, and great atmosphere. Well, Natalia, thank you so much for showing me your Moscow and inviting me into your family thank as you well. Thank you so much, Daniel. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Tanya Breyer, and thank you for watching Trailblazers on CNBC Life. If you want to watch another episode, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thank you so much for watching.